Hi, my name is Carly Brogan and I am in my second year at Moravian University for the Master's in Occupational Therapy program. Um, back in January, I started working for Dr. Mary Colshaw. Um, I was elected as her research assistant and, um, you know, prior to getting this job, I had no idea what I was going to do. I just knew what the job description said and it basically told me that I was going to be researching, um, you know, helping out the professor in any way they need. So I didn't know specifically what we were going to research. So fast forward, I start working for Dr. Colshaw and she starts telling me about FASD and um, her passion for it, which it's, in my opinion, it's always better and it's always more meaningful doing something for someone when they are as passionate for something as Dr. Colshaw is about FASD. So, you know, when, when she explained it to me um, and she explained to me what her vision was and what her research was all about, um, I was so eager to jump in and, and to just start helping her. Our first project that we did was FASD and sleep. And surprisingly, there's not a lot of information out there on FASD and sleep at all. But um, what we found was that people who are diagnosed with FASD do in fact have sleeping um, disorders or trouble sleeping, staying asleep, falling asleep. Um, so this is something that we wanted to attack and, and really try to find answers for or conduct research that can maybe have an answer for what was happening. Um, the next thing we started to look at was FASD and driving. Um, this one was really interesting to me because there's no law that says that if you have FASD, you can't drive. However, majority of people who have FASD do not drive. And when they're diagnosed at a young age, it's just it just becomes a habit that they don't go to get their license because no one addresses that they may be able to drive. People just assume that, oh, they have FASD, they can't drive. Um, so this was something else that uh, me and Dr. Colshaw researched and, and both of these projects, FASD and sleep and FASD and driving are continuous projects. Um, I'm excited to see where uh, they end up. I'm excited to learn more about how to help individuals with FASD, how to help their, them with sleep. Um, and to drive because as an occupational therapist, sleep and community mobility are a huge part of what we do. Um, and for someone to be functionally independent in these two aspects uh, who has FASD would be truly an amazing um, thing to accomplish. And I look forward to seeing where that research takes us and where it takes Dr. Colshaw. So my background of FASD prior to meeting Dr. Colshaw was none. I knew it existed, I've heard of it before, but I never was in a position where I had to research it. Um, I was never in a position where I had to actually know what it was. Um, I just knew it existed. After researching it, I realized that it is very, it is just as common as autism. And for, you know, Autism Speaks, they have, what I found is that they have millions of followers and millions of donations go towards autism foundations to help find a cure or for treatment, um, to help these kids or adults who need that extra help because they have this diagnosis. The prevalence of someone developing or being born with FASD in comparison to the prevalence of autism are almost equal. So to see that autism has so much, like so many followers and so much of a support compared to FASD who has very little support. We're talking millions of followers for autism on Instagram accounts compared to not even a thousand followers for FASD, but the prevalence is the same. So the issue stands that not many people know about FASD. And the issue stands that 
people aren't doing anything to help because they're just not aware. So, you know, I spent 10 hours a week researching FASD. I mean, it started to become my knowledge. It started to become my background. And it was saddening to see that there was no efforts being made to help a community that needs help. Um, and a big part of occupational therapy is to advocate for others, advocate for people who may not be able to advocate for themselves or advocate for those who deserve their functional rights, deserve to participate in the community and in things that they love doing. Um, so then I thought, you know, uh, National Day of Awareness for FASD is September 9th. I figured why not conduct a day at Moravian? Why not get the students involved at Moravian? Undergrad, graduate students, the professors, let's make FASD more known. Because even if it's just Moravian, that's still more than what it was before. And you never know, it could spread. People can find out from other places. Moravian, a lot of people know about Moravian. If they hear that we're doing all of this stuff for FASD, they may want to jump on. So what I talked to Dr. Coleshaw about was, um, let's have a day. Let's have, um, on September 9th, let's run our own FASD day. Let's tell the professors to let their students know. And I wanted to go big. I wanted to make it an event, I invite people. We'll have food, drinks, speakers, donations, a fundraiser. <laughs> Dr. Coleshaw kind of brought me back down and, and made me realize that it's going to take time. It's, it's a process, but um, why not start the process? So as of right now, um, I'm working closely with Dr. Coleshaw and other members of the Moravian University Health Science um, programs, and we are going to spread awareness for this day. Um, Dr. Coleshaw is going to speak on behalf of FAS FASD, explain what it's about, um, and then we're going to have a couple guest speakers to share their knowledge. Maybe they they have a kid with FASD or, or them themselves have FASD. Um, my hope is that this day or this event will grow years to come, and it will be that big event, and, and there will be fundraisers and donations and raffles and um and people will know people will know about FASD students college students especially um will be more aware of their actions and and will know how what they do on a weekend or their risky behaviors or their binge drinking and reckless decisions can affect another life that didn't ask for that um, I think a lot of it has to do with just knowing. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm going to change the world here, but I think that it's a start. Um, and I think that the students are excited to learn more about it and they're excited to be a part of the start of something. Um, I actually asked some of my friends to say a little piece on um, what they have learned about FASD or about the event that is soon to come. So let's see what they have to say. So I only learned about FASD when I became an occupational therapy student. Um, I think it's really important to spread awareness and become educated on a topic such as this, which is why I'm really excited for this FASD campaign. I think it's gonna be a great way to advocate for this population and to get those who may not know or may not be aware of this problem. Um, but it's going to get them more involved and it's going to get them to learn more and even for me, a student. Um, and I think it's just a great opportunity to continue learning. Fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, or FASD, is a disorder that not a lot of people know much about. It's very misrepresented in our science and our studies and that's due to not a lot of research being done on this disorder. There's so many different things that can come about for people who suffer through this and that impacts not only the child but the mother and the people that are around him, as, him or her as well. I'm very excited for what's to come and what I'm going to learn during Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder Awareness Day in September and I'm really excited to spread my information and knowledge to people around me. 
Fetal alcohol spectrum disorder is a very interesting condition that is more common than we think. FASD can appear very differently in each individual. It is a condition that should be and needs to be advocated for. I look forward to learning more about FASD in September. Hi everyone, I'm very excited to learn about FASD through Moravian's FASD social media campaign. Um, while I am an OT student, there are still many things I do not know about this condition. Um, I do know that FASD impacts many individuals' lives and can be preventable through education. So I think it's super important that we're starting this discussion on FASD and bringing it to light here in our community. And I'm very happy that Moravian is giving us this opportunity to learn and advocate for others. So I asked my friends to just share a little piece on what they know about FASD because um, it goes to show that it's not well known. Um, you know, they even said it themselves. They didn't know about it until they started learning about it. Um, but FASD is real. Fetal alcohol spectrum disorder is real. Mothers who drink during pregnancy any time during their pregnancy put their child at risk for developing FASD. And this is a disease that will last with their infant forever. And as we know, there's not a lot of awareness about it. So your child isn't gonna get the help that they need or that they deserve. Um, so my hopes are that running this FASD event at Moravian is that more people will become aware and FASD will start to get a name, um, a better name a name where people know what it is, know how to prevent it. And if it happens, because mistakes happen, if, if a mom drinks during pregnancy, if a father, if whatever happens, they need to know that they're gonna be safe in their own community and that they will get the help they need. So I'm very excited uh, for this FASD event come September. And I just wanna thank everyone um, that has helped me along the way, especially Dr. Colshaw, because she has been such a great mentor throughout this process um, and has introduced me to some really awesome people. So I thank everyone um, and I'm very thankful for this opportunity and I'm excited to see how it turns out.